And I'm joined now by Congressman Mike Lawler, Republican from New York. He's a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thank you for joining us on uh, recess here. Your reaction, first of all, just to what we've seen and heard today about this prisoner exchange. Look, obviously, any day Americans uh, who are wrongly detained or held hostage are released, it's a good day for the United States of America. And obviously, we are uh, very happy uh, that Evan Gershkovich, uh, as well as Paul Whalen, uh, among others, have been released um, and certainly uh, are happy for their families. And I do think, obviously, the administration uh, you know, deserves uh, uh, support for having uh, brokered uh, this deal. Uh, certainly, uh, conversely, uh, obviously, when you engage in these negotiations, uh, difficult decisions are made uh, and uh, criminals uh, are released. And we know Vladimir Putin has a history of doing this, knowing full well uh, that he uses it as leverage uh, to get uh, bad actors, uh, and folks uh, who engage in his bidding uh, around the globe released, uh, including now a murderer uh, that the Germans released as part of this uh, agreement. And so, uh, you know, it, it just obviously reinforces the fact that Vladimir Putin is a vile dictator and thug uh, who uh, certainly uh, at some point uh, needs to be held accountable for all of his actions. Your chairman, Mike McCall, on the Foreign Affairs Committee, released a statement earlier talking about how thrilled he was for the release of these folks, but also making the point that the release of these Russian criminals held in the U.S. and elsewhere, he says, sends a dangerous message to Putin that only encourages further hostage-taking by his regime. You touched on this a little bit, but do you think the U.S. gave up too much here? And how would you propose getting these folks back without making these kinds of deals? Look, we have obviously seen, uh, going back to uh, President Obama and Vice President Biden and, and here in the Biden administration, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, has uh, aggressively uh, pursued uh, activity, including war crimes, including uh, seizing of land, uh, and obviously uh, hostage taking. Uh, and I think one of the things that we as a United States need to be clear eyed about uh, in dealing with Putin, in dealing with uh, President Xi in, in China, uh, in dealing with the Ayatollah in Iran, uh, is that these are not our friends, they're not our allies, uh, and that there needs to be severe consequences for their actions. Uh, you look at how those three countries in particular, and you can add in North Korea, but those three countries have worked in a coordinated effort to undermine and destabilize the United States and the free world. Uh, whether you're talking about uh, invest, uh, aggressively invading Ukraine, whether you're talking about the terrorist attacks on Israel, whether you're talking about the illicit oil trade between China and Iran, which is funding the terrorism in the Middle East. Uh, we need to be clear-eyed about all of this moving forward. And, and so to Chairman McCall's point, uh, in dealing with Vladimir Putin, uh, he looks at this uh, in much the way Hamas is looking at holding American hostages in Gaza, including Israeli hostages, uh, is that it is a negotiating tool. It is a, a tool by which he can gain something. Uh, and so, you know, obviously when you do engage in that negotiation, uh, in some respect it does embolden them. And that is what we've seen uh, even with uh, Hamas continuing to hold eight Americans hostage, uh, even though they released Israeli hostages uh, a few months ago as part of a negotiation. They continue to hold hostages because they understand its leverage. I want to play for you another piece of what President Biden had to say today about this deal and why it didn't or did and did not happen previously. Let's listen. Trump has said repeatedly that he could have gotten the hostages out without giving anything in exchange. What do you say to that? What do you say to President Trump now, former president? Why didn't he do it when he's president? Sir, what did you say? A little tough to hear, but I'll pose the question to you that uh, the president got there. Why didn't Donald Trump secure the release of Paul Whelan, for example, when he was president? He often speaks very confidently about his ability to strike such deals. Well, first of all, uh, again, I think this we have to take a step back. This is a good day for America. We have Americans coming home, including Paul Whelan. 
Uh, during the Trump administration, you did have hostages released, as you have here. Uh, Evan Gershkovich was taken hostage during the Biden administration. Uh, and obviously, both during the Obama administration and the Biden administration, you've had Russian aggression in Ukraine. And Paul so Wheeler was idea that during we're the Trump trying administration. To, I mean, we, we're trying we can... to have a... T yeah, but, but the idea, Garrett, that we're trying to have this, well, no, it should have been Donald Trump or it should have been Joe Biden. I mean, come on. At the end of the day, Vladimir Putin is the vile dictator and thug who engaged in this conflict. Sure. Uh, and ultimately, uh, we want our hostages uh, brought home. We want Americans released. I give the Biden administration credit that they were able to get this uh, deal uh, negotiated. As Chairman McCall and I pointed out uh, in our comments earlier, obviously when you do engage in these negotiations, we are giving up something. There is a risk that uh, Putin is emboldened to continue to do this uh, aggressively. Uh, and that's why it is it is so important that as the United States, we understand the threat. And the threat is not each other, it is uh, the uh, vile dictatorship, the despots, uh, the totalitarian regimes of Russia, China, and Iran that seek to undermine and destabilize the United States. Congressman, I would be remiss not to ask you about the other big campaign news of this week. What is your take on Donald Trump's comments yesterday about Kamala Harris's race? Uh, look, this election should not be about race. It should not be about gender. It should be about the issues. Uh, under the Biden-Harris administration, uh, we have seen record high inflation, the cost of groceries, the cost of gasoline, the cost of a home mortgage skyrocketing. We've seen a border crisis. Uh, we've seen one international crisis after the next. Uh, that's what this election should be about and what the focus should be. Uh, any day that anyone is talking about anything other than the issues is a day that uh, they're losing. So. Uh, for me uh, and in my campaign, I focus on the issues. Uh, you know, my opponent, Mondaire Jones, was the third most progressive member of Congress. He agrees with Kamala Harris about defunding the police and open borders and cashless bail and Medicare for all and the Green New Deal. Uh, voters in my district don't agree with that. And so uh, that's where the focus should be on the issues. Uh, and nothing else. A number of positions Harris says she no longer holds, but that is a subject for a whole other interview another time. <laughs> Congressman Mike Lawler, I appreciate you coming in again on recess. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.